Hey everyone, how's it going? So after I surprised all of you and did a quick run with Mewtwo, a lot of you have been wondering if any Pokemon could potentially dethrone it. So far, there have been some close calls, but realistically, Mewtwo has had a decisive edge over all of them. One Pokemon I thought might pose an interesting challenge to Mewtwo is Cloyster, and I'll tell you why. Cloyster is blessed with some of the best base stats in the entire game. Being tied for 7 with Gyarados and honestly pretty close to the number 2 spot, Dragonite. However, there's a bit of a caveat. If you look a little closer at Cloyster's base stats, say that three times fast, you may notice that average 96 is brought up immensely by its massive base 180 defense which in a solo run isn't actually that useful. We would rather have higher special and speed, both of which are substantially lower than all the other Pokemon in this tier. Additionally, like several other Pokemon in this tier, Cloyster is in the slow level up group, meaning Cloyster is going to get no advantage over Pokemon like Mewtwo there. So why do I think Cloyster has a chance? Well, Honestly, Cloyster's typing helps out immensely. Water Pokemon in Generation 1 are extremely powerful. There aren't a lot of powerful Grass Pokemon, and they get a lot of useful moves. Ice Pokemon are also very good in Generation 1. I know, not really a thing in competitive Pokemon, but for solo battles, they are. They get arguably the best move in the game, Blizzard. And even if you don't use that, Ice Beam is pretty darn good as well. At this point, we don't have either of those moves. It doesn't matter, we'll still destroy Brock. We have both Aurora Beam and Clamp. Now, Clamp could be pretty good. It's one of those cheap wrap-like moves, kind of like Fire Spin. And while it has a much better base 35 power, it's got an abysmal 70% accuracy. So we won't really use it much outside of this gym battle, since it is double super effective and... I'm not going to be healing, so I'd like to conserve power points. Honestly, there's a chance I could do Cloyster Minimum Battles, so I do want to try and do that. There's not much of a disadvantage, to be honest, since for whatever reason, Cloyster doesn't learn Body Slam. So I don't even have to be tempted to get that. After we defeat Brock, the next thing we do is make it to Cerulean City. Unfortunately, Cloyster doesn't really have a good move for dealing with Misty, so we're going to have to battle Rival 2, who's not too much of a problem. The biggest concern is Sand Attack. Thankfully, Pidgeotto missed that. It's a 1 in 4 chance if an opponent uses a status move. Kind of a weird mechanic, but that's how Gen 1 and 2 work. And the other thing I need to do is just make sure I don't run out of power points, which is why you see me going for Clamp against Abra. I really would prefer not to heal. I have picked up the TM for Water Gun, but it's just marginally stronger, and it doesn't stun lock the opponent. So, for this battle, I don't mind using Clamp, and then I get fresh power points. Obviously, against Bulbasaur, and yeah, maybe I could have picked Charmander, or maybe even Squirtle. But, I didn't really know. None of them were good. I mean, Squirtle would have been able to do nothing against me. And that means the final battle, I have an Executor. I won. Obviously, I won. I actually won multiple times. I made a lot of weird mistakes, and kept forgetting to save. Which speaks to how good I thought this run was going to be. And funnily enough, as you watch me battle the Nugget Bridge Trainers, you'll notice that I don't always use Aurora Beam, despite the fact it's much stronger. I have to save power points for the final trainer with the two Oddish and a Pidgey. I need three left, there's a whole lot of trainers. So I need to be smart, if it's a 1 KO, use Aurora Beam, if it's a 2 KO, use Water Gun. Unfortunately, sometimes Water Gun's a 3 KO. Again, Cloyster's speed and special, not anything to write home about. But, I made it through no problem. Now after we are done with Nugget Bridge, I decide to battle Misty. The reason for this is that if we don't defeat Misty, we can't use Cut outside of battle. And that means we can't beat Lieutenant Surge and have to go back. And unfortunately, of course, it's Lieutenant Surge that allows us to fly. So we can't just simply fly back to Vermilion, which wouldn't waste as much time. And so the bottom line is, you need to beat Misty now so you can beat Lieutenant Surge on time. Now to be honest, I didn't think this would go so well, but it did. Part of the reason is that Misty has good AI, meaning she won't use her superior water moves, and instead is just going to spam X defense, tackle, and I have base 180 defense. Plus, I can use Supersonic, the only time I use Supersonic in the entire run, mind you, in order to confuse the star me, 
and it takes a really long time. It was annoying, but note we aren't going to get access to any other moves. Cloyster is a Pokemon that evolves via Water Stone, so it only learns one level up move, Spike Cannon at level 50. So it wouldn't really matter in terms of moves. In the end, it took a while, but it was really, really easy. Another first try victory for me. That's two for two. And we can head to Rival 3. Now, there's an additional benefit of beating Misty. You won't see it against Pidgeotto. I mean, I do outspeed because I'm at a higher level, so that's kind of nice. But against the Raticate, I'm able to use Bubble Beam. Identical base power to Aurora Beam, but it lowers speed instead of attack. I don't know, just gives me more power points, honestly. Unfortunately, it's not a 1-hit KO, but it doesn't really do much. Kadabra outspeeds and goes for Confusion on the first turn. It does quite a decent amount of damage, I guess. But the second turn, it goes for Teleport and I knock it out. I was hoping I'd one-shot Ivysaur, but I don't. Doesn't attack me, uses Leech Seed. So all good, all good. So far, the run has been going pretty smoothly. Unfortunately, that smoothness is about to get bumpy real quickly. Lieutenant Surge was a nightmare. I don't have speed Voltorb, but it can't really do anything to me, and I'm able to knock it out without much issue. Pikachu, however, weak Pikachu, I don't one-shot with Bubble Beam, and it paralyzes me with Thunder Wave. But that's not really the problem. The problem is that, yeah, Raichu just obliterated me. And I did battle Surge multiple times, the critical hit did not matter as far as I'm aware. And in the one instance where Lieutenant Surge used an X speed, Bubble Beam barely was doing a quarter of Raichu's health. So unfortunately, we ended up wasting quite a bit of time because it actually would have been way faster to battle Misty later since I'm going to have to come back to Lieutenant Surge anyway. And that pretty much takes Cloyster out of the Mewtwo tier immediately. But... All is not lost, it still can find itself top tier, so long as this is the only speed bump. And as you'd expect, as a water ice type, nothing on the way to Celadon really gave me any issues, nor did anything in Celadon City. Now, I could have maybe tried to battle Erika, but instead I decided to go battle Giovanni first, because he's not going to be much of an issue, and the money I will gain here will allow me to buy one more calcium, which may help me out. With my massive defense, I don't even need to fear the Kangaskhan, which of course was not going to be a 1-hit KO. In fact, it was a 3-hit KO, but it does next to nothing to me. I was even poisoned before the battle started. Did not matter. And now we get to my favorite part of the run, upgrading Cloyster. I mean, I went to get the Fly HM, then I went shopping. Calciums are cool, but I'm also going to give Cloyster two of its final moves. I always buy a freshwater anyway because you need that to get into Saffron City. We'll buy one additional one and a lemonade in order to get two very good moves. Ice Beam and Tri Attack. At this point, we pretty much have our final move set for Cloyster. And with Ice Beam, I'm fairly certain Erica won't be too bad. I'm going to go for Ice Beam and oh, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, it froze. Um, That's not good. I think Razorleaf would have one-shot me. So this was a mistake. I mean, that was a 10% freeze chance, and that's pretty lucky. And of course, Tangela can't really do anything to me. So it's going to come down to Vile Plume, and unsurprisingly, it too is not a 1-hit KO. But Petal Dance doesn't do nearly enough, and we win. Due to a 10% freeze chance. Huh... That doesn't feel right. Let me try this again. I'm curious to see if Razorleaf would knock me out. All right, well, we don't knock out Victory Bell and Sleep Powder. That doesn't really help. I don't wake up, and yeah, it does knock me out. Now, here's the thing. I have two options. One option is to just try and brute force this fight, which happens pretty quickly since I get a critical hit, and we know how the rest of the fight's going to go. Or I could have come back. Truth is, if I were doing this run again, I obviously would do Rival 4 first, and with those increase in levels, I probably would be able to one-shot Victory Bell. I also forgot to use the Calciums, that could have mattered. So a couple mistakes here. One thing that's important to note is that these are always my first attempts. They're not going to be perfect, and as we saw with the second Mewtwo video, 
With proper practice, I can easily cut over an hour off of most of these runs. They are completely imperfect, just proof of concept runs. This is honestly the biggest reason I've stuck to in-game time over real time, since when I reset and try to readjust my strategy, it doesn't punish the Pokemon for me not predicting properly, and it doesn't necessitate that I need to do a ton of research before these runs, which would ruin a lot of the fun for me. Part of what makes these runs so enjoyable are these moments where I just totally got something wrong, and that's happened now twice. Speaking of which, it's time to go battle Lieutenant Surge again. Now I not only outspeed the Voltorb, but Ice Beam one-shots. It will also one-shot the Pikachu. And while I don't one-shot Raichu, I do survive Thunderbolt. So the levels were worth it. Very unfortunate I didn't realize this beforehand, but hey, it happens. And at the end of the day, we still have four gym badges with a very good pace. Not the perfect section right here, but still Cloyster has a lot of potential. Speaking of which, we're going to go and see its potential on full display with Rival 4. One of the easiest major battles of the entire run. Pidgeotto is a 1 at KO with Ice Beam. That's pretty good. Gyarados needs two hits with Ice Beam, but Bite does nothing. Yay, 180 base power defense. Growlithe, I switched to Bubble Beam, which actually is kind of slower because of the super effective message, but we're not really frame counting in these runs. Kadabra, we switched to Tri Attack because my attack is higher than my special attack, and Kadabra's defense is way worse than its special. Finally, because it is not a Venusaur yet, we outspeed and one shot the Ivysaur with an Ice Beam. That was easy as heck. But now I'm kind of nervous because for Pokemon in the slow level up group, you're simply not able to keep pace with this next section. We're kind of overleveled in the Pokemon Tower, but when we get to Koga, heck, even before we battle Koga himself, we're being outleveled by just random Pokemon in the gym. And while Koga's Pokemon don't have nearly as high special as Drowsy or Hypno, they're still strong enough that I was a little nervous. And hence, you see me saving as I go to battle the first time. Coughing number one outlevels us by four. We go for Ice Beam. Decent damage. Goes for Tackle. Does next to nothing. We knock out Coughing number one. Muck, we still have speed, but we're only doing about a third, and it went for Minimize, which is the worst. Thankfully, we do hit, but another Minimize. You know what's coming next. I go for Bubble Beam, and okay, we didn't miss. That's surprising. Good luck today, I guess. Two down. I go for Ice Beam, the extra level doesn't seem to mean much, Sludge doesn't do all that much, and I knock out Coughing number two. Ice Beam, well it does decent damage to Weezing, and it goes for Self-Destruct. Now I wasn't at full health going into this battle, want to see how it would go, and honestly I think I might be able to do it. I didn't heal after I battled the last juggler, this might be possible. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have any potions. I'm just going to try again at 57 health, which is not very smart, to be honest. I go for Ice Beam against Coughing number one. Smokescreen misses that one in four chance. We knock it out. Ice Beam on Muck. This time it goes for an X attack. That's very good. Another Ice Beam. Poison Gas. I don't even care if I got poisoned. And Bubble Beam knocks it out. Two down again. This time I'm going to go for Bubble Beam, save my Ice Beams, it goes for Tackle, not an issue. Another Bubble Beam knocks it out. Truth is, I should have gotten Surf before this battle. A lot of mistakes were made. Anyway, I'm going to use Ice Beam, it goes for an X Attack. That's going to make Self Destruct even more deadly. Another Ice Beam, it goes for Sludge, that's not going to knock me out, I think I win. And let's not go, Smog. Okay, alright, well... I mean, this was really my fault that it even was this close. Didn't have enough Ice Beam power points, wasn't at full health, didn't have Surf, and it still only took two attempts. Now, let me be really honest what my real motivation was. I want to see if this was the point I should use Rare Candies. Since we were outleveled by nine by the time it got to Weezing, and yet it still only took us two attempts, we almost won the first time too. It really was just that... 1 in 4 chance of it using self-destruct, and I don't even know if that would knock me out at full health with my massive 180 base defense. Probably would, but I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, 
That that was all right. And after we beat Koga and get Surf, it's time to go battle rival Fievel. All right, well, Pidgeot outlevels us. It goes for Whirlwind, and we almost knock it out. Sliver of HP remaining. Of course, it goes for Sand Attack. I go for Withdraw, since that will actually buff my speed by a little bit. And as you see, I outspeed Pidgeot and knock it out. Now, Gyarados, I don't do much damage to. The super effective message is a glitch. It's just doing normal effective damage. Thankfully, with a Withdraw, Gyarados is doing nothing to me. Then, of course, I miss with an Ice Beam because of that Sand Attack. It goes for Dragon Rage, and I don't Rage Quit. I just realized that trying to battle rival Fievel underleveled with an Accuracy Drop is dumb, and there's a pretty good chance we get another battle where that doesn't happen. Case in point? Okay, but it misses. It misses. This time I set up the Withdraw right away. Just so you know, it is not boosting my special, so I'm not going to deal more damage because of that. Pidgeot goes for Quick Attack, and unsurprisingly, it was a range, and we knock out the Pidgeot in one hit with our accuracy intact. Out of curiosity, I go for Tri Attack, and it's doing about the same that Ice Beam was. Gyarados uses Leer, which does actually boost Tri Attack's power, and even though it uses Dragon Rage, it's going to be a three hit KO with Tri Attack. So, Gyarados, the scariest Pokemon, maybe, down as well. Told you I was getting Surf, and I'm gonna use it. Growlithe, bye-bye. Now, I thankfully outspeed, but I don't one-shot Alakazam. Retroactive Potion, more than good enough. And we made it to Venusaur, but I don't think this is going to go well for me. Because Venusaur is just going to use Razor Leaf after I don't <laughs> one-shot. Okay, well, yay, we got a critical hit. I was kind of curious how much damage I would deal to Venusaur, but I guess we won't find out. I was prepared to use Rare Candies here too, to be quite honest with you guys. Guess I don't need to. Critical Hit's pretty lucky. Pretty sure with my base speed, it's only a 15% chance, give or take. But, hey, I'll take it. And after beating Rival Fievel, it's time to take a little breather. This has been a difficult section of the run. I mean, nothing's been too bad. This is still really easy comparatively. But not a lot of first try victories and when we've gotten victories, they seem to be coming with asterisks. Yeah, we beat Rival Fievel in two tries, but we got a crit. Yeah, we beat Erica, but we froze and got a crit. Is Cloyster finally going to live up to its massive base stat potential? If there's any gym leader, it might do so. It's Blaine, the fire gym. Sure, his moves are normal effective, but I got water moves. I should be able to beat him, right? Blaine's first Pokemon is Growlithe, which outlevels us by 5. I'm going to set up some withdraws since there's not much Growlithe can really do to me, and I do want to outspeed the remainder of Blaine's Pokemon, which I definitely will not currently. Unfortunately, I level up after I beat the Growlithe, meaning the glitchy speed boosts I get from withdraw, those aren't going to carry over. And so... After I knock out the Ponyta, Rapidash comes out, and remember I talked about cheap rap style moves? Here you go. Fire spin, fire spin, and yeah, I actually do not get another opportunity. There is a 30% chance every time it reuses it that it can miss, and I think it lasts between two and five turns. The absolute dumbest moves ever created, it's why they were changed. So yay, we actually have to try Blaine again, but to be quite honest, he got insanely lucky. Also, knowing what we know now, I won't set up withdraws against the Growlithe, but rather the Ponyta. Unfortunately, it also knows Fire Spin, but hopefully we get a miss somewhere. Well, I do outspeed naturally, so I get off one withdraw, it goes for Fire Spin. Last three turns, not a big deal. I need to go for another withdraw, I think, to outspeed the Rapidash. Fire spin misses. Let's go. I knock out the Ponyta, and this is the moment of truth. Will we outspeed? Yes, we do. Yes, we knock it out. I think we're good. Not positive, though. Fire Blast can do a lot of damage. We outspeed our canine. Very decent damage. It goes for Ember. We win. Another second try victory. Nothing too amazing here. 
We are extremely underleveled, so it is impressive how quickly we're getting through the game. Right now, we're a solid 20 minutes behind Mewtwo's pace, which is expected. Mewtwo is just so great. But, considering all the problems we've had, that's actually really impressive for Cloyster. And now that we've beaten Blaine, there's literally only one gym leader that we can battle, Sabrina. Cadaver outspeeds and goes for Psybeam, decent damage. I go for Withdraw for the same reasons as before. Little worried about outspeeding Alakazam, go for another Withdraw, I get a Recover at full health. I decide not to press my luck, I know it knows Psychic, and I knock out Kadabra, one down. And again I level up after the first Pokemon. Man, experience points are not being my friend today. Well, we naturally outspeed Mr. Mime, and I don't know if that crit mattered, but we do one shot with Tri Attack, that's two down. Pretty sure Ice Beam will deal more to Venomoth, and over half. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I think it's got good AI. That's why it used Stun Spore, but that's terrible for me, since Alakazam will have a field day with us now. All right, it goes for Reflect turn one. I went for Withdraw accidentally. I meant to go for Tri Attack. But it didn't matter because I didn't attack and it went for Psy Wave and it still did decent damage. This sucks. And now Tri Attack does nothing. Maybe it would have done half before and yeah, okay. Well, that was fun. Can we try that again, but not terrible? That would be super nice. Like with Blaine, I'm not going to set up against a Pokemon that I can't set up against. That's good. Disable didn't work. And we knock out Kadabra at full health. So that's great. So we can set up against Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime literally has one attacking move, Confusion. So it's easy to set up against, but it can use Barrier and Light Screen, so sometimes it's the worst. All right, there's one Withdraw, and that's what I was talking about, Barrier. Two Withdraws, and it's going to waste my time with Double Slap, but arguably that's the best move it could use. Another Withdraw for me, another Barrier for Mr. Mime. A fourth Withdraw for me, you can see how little Confusion does. That was a critical hit ignoring all my buffs, it still did next to nothing. But it scared me enough that I'm going to go for Surf and knock out Mr. Mime. Two down. Hopefully with my withdraws, I knock out Venomoth. No. So I need five withdraws. I'm paralyzed once again. Hooray. Psybeam does almost nothing, and I knock out Venomoth. I think about whether I want to reset and decide, heck, I'll just go for Ice Beam, because I thought it was going to go for Reflect, which it just did. And we won. Generation 1, just so you guys know, you can't be unfrozen unless I attack with a fire move, which I don't have. So, yeah, there's no chance to be unfrozen. It is the cheapest, most anti-competitive thing in the game. And I think you know where this is going. I'm not going to beat Sabrina like that. That was so dumb. We know if I set up one more withdraw, this battle could probably be very consistent. I outspeed Alakazam and probably one shot with try attack. Can we get a battle like that? This time, Kadabra does not play nice. It goes for Psybeam. I go for Tri-Attack, and look at that. It was a range. Thankfully, Sabrina uses a Hyper Potion. I get the high roll, and we knock out Kadabra. All right, let's try setting up against Mr. Mime. Confusion, that's not a big deal. Two, Light Screen. All right, I guess I'm going for Tri-Attack. Three, Barrier. I guess I'm not sure what I'm doing now. Withdraw, another barrier. Looks like I'm going for Ice Beam. The second last withdraw, Confusion. Well, that did decent damage. Okay. And the last one, Confusion. All right. Well, if everything goes according to plan, I won't get damaged. I go for Surf, and I don't knock it out. Well, he used Light Screen. What did I expect? All right, let's try this one more time. Disable Ice Beam. It's fine. I can use Surf. It's not a big deal. One down. All right. Light screen, fine. I can still use tri attack now. Double slap, waste time, but not a big deal. I've got ice beam back. Confusion, fine. I'm not confused. That's good. All right. Just one more after this. Confusion. Of course, it crits. It has got great speed, and we're good, I think. I don't know. No barrier. So tri attack should and does one shot Mr. Mime. Ice beam should easily one shot. Oh, are you kidding me? Well, at least it missed, but like, come on! Critical hits ignore stat buffs, so it's one of the fun cases where crit did less damage than if it wouldn't have critted. Really fun. Anyway, we knock out the Venomoth, and I'm not sure if we're going to one-shot Alakazam with Tri-Attack here. I actually misclick and go for Ice Beam, and it goes for Reflect. 
you know what? I'm done. <laughs> this is fine. Uh, I, I don't care. I mean, this could have gone better. There was a lot of different things I could have done. I could have used... It's done. We've beaten Sabrina enough times to say that we can beat Sabrina semi-consistently. We can move on and battle Giovanni. You can tell I'm not taking him seriously because I'm not even going to save before I battle him. There is no reality in which Giovanni beats me. Let's just get this over with. I meant to go for withdraw, I accidentally go for surf. And it knocks out Rhyhorn, but I'm not going to outspeed Doug Trio, which goes for Dig. Now I'm going to set up that withdraw because that was annoying as heck. And a crit, but I survive because, you know, base 180 defense. Knock out Doug Trio. Knock out Nido Queen. Knock out Nido King. And this will shock you. I knock out the four times weak ride on to Sir. What a truly breathtaking battle we just had. But like always, the Elite Four is upon us. That means that we have probably at least half the video left because honestly, the Elite Four typically take more than half the time I spend on my runs. I include Rival 6 with the Elite Four. He can be pretty difficult as well. But to be honest with you, I have a pretty good feeling about this battle. This time, I looked at my experience and knew I was going to level up. Pidgeot goes for Whirlwind. I don't sit up against Pidgeot and I level up. So I will be able to set up against Rhyhorn which is great. As you're about to see, Rhyhorn can do nothing. I'm gonna set up six withdraws. Why even chance it? Just go for maximum boosts. I know every video is someone's first, but I have talked about the badge boost glitch mechanics in depth in many of my other videos. So just watch one of my other videos, the Ponyta one, my last video, I went into pretty good detail. For this one, just know it raises all my stats because of a weird quirk in generation one programming and I'm gonna be faster, stronger at this point in the game. And just so you know, Rhyhorn's Tail Whips also contribute to the boosts. That said, with all the boosts I got, I think seven or eight in total, still don't one-shot Gyarados, but it can't do anything to me. So I still knock it out. Once again, I misclick, I go for withdraw again, but doesn't really matter. Can knock out the Growlithe with Surf. Curious if I can one-shot Alakazam with Ice Beam after that badge boost. I don't, that's okay, and... Oh. Well, that wasn't very nice. That was my fault. That was my fault. I was being a little... A little too cocky. I should have just gone for try attack. Alright, well... Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> oh, God. One of the worst things, and this is another reason I use in-game time. When I forget to save... I mean, this battle should have been easy. I should have just used try attack. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm so mad at myself right now, but at the very least, we get to battle Giovanni again. And this time I actually learned, unbeknownst to a lot of people, including myself, not all his Pokemon are one shot by Surfer Ice Beam. Nido King actually survives and has the audacity to use Thrash. What a jerk. Anyway, we're back to Rival 6 and not even gonna really narrate this battle because, let's be honest, you all kinda know what's gonna happen here. It's just a matter of not using the wrong move and then seeing if we knock out Venusaur. At this point in time, since we've got a second, I wanna further defend why I don't mind using Withdraw in order to boost all my stats. I've said before it's just a mechanic in Gen 1, and I always get pushback. I've said this before, but not using badge boosts is really difficult. The Rhyhorn is using Tail Whip. What, am I supposed to just stall and hope he uses a bunch of Tail Whips? But the bigger problem for me is that there are many Pokemon who I genuinely would want to use moves like Amnesia or Swords Dance, and those will unintentionally increase my speed, which will be helpful. This happened as a kid, and I had no idea why I was suddenly faster. Now I just know how the game works. Yes, I do want to play the game without glitches, because I want to have the same sort of experience I had as a kid, but I knew nothing back then. The fact I understand the game. In my mind, it doesn't fundamentally change the play experience the way glitching does. I'm still playing the same game, I just understand how it works better. 
And since in my mind, for certain runs, using badge boosts are unavoidable, might as well use them all the time. It seems so silly and arbitrary to be like, well, if you really need attack, you can use Swords Dance, but don't use it too much for speed. That would be bad. Anyway, we're back at Alakazam. We actually use Tri-Attack, of course, at one-shots. And we level up, which cancels my badge boost that I just defended. Hooray! And there's Razor Leaf. All right, you know what? I have 600 experience points before I level up, but I'm at minimum battles. Just gonna rare candy, who cares? For a level lower, it'll just look better on the tier list. Easily I could find just 600 experience points and be one level higher, but it really shouldn't matter if Cloyster is gonna be anywhere as good as I need it to be to truly compete with the real top tier, AKA the tier just below Mewtwo. With rare candies, this fight is a complete and total joke. I mean, of course it is. It was already easy without the rare candies. Now we're at a higher level. We won't level up in the middle of the fight and we probably would have outsped Venusaur even without the badge boost. Though I don't know if I would one shot. I could have taught Blizzard though too. Always have that in my back pocket. Biggest reason I never use it, 10% chance to miss. It's gonna miss every single time I need a clutch hit. You know it, I know it, everyone knows it. But of course we are one shotting every single Pokemon, including the Venusaur, and we have made it to the Elite Four. Pretty good time, I mean, a bit of up and down a little bit, but relatively speaking, this has been completely smooth sailing. One of my quickest runs to date up to the Elite Four, but we all know the Elite Four is when the real trouble begins. So we know this is gonna go poorly. This hasn't been the easiest run. Let's just be thankful Cloyster has been as good as it has been up to now. And we'll see what the Elite Four has in store for us as we do our first test attempt. All right, well, Loralee's Dugong can't really do much to me. I'm just gonna set up withdraws because I can't really do much to Loralee's Pokemon. We're kind of at a bit of a stalemate here, but I think five to one, especially with them being at a higher level, they should have a bit of the advantage. Thankfully, since that pitiful takedown does recoil damage, Dugong Gress, it will not use Aurora Beam because I am Ice Water type, so it, it just won't use that. It will, however, use Growl. And that's not ideal because although it boosts my special, I still lose a lot of attack. So that, that's not good. I will have to use my special not very effective moves now. That's not what I wanted. I meant to go for Surf. I go for Ice Beam. I'm convinced Surf would have knocked it out there. Ice Beam did pretty decent damage. Surf? Okay, just under half. Another Surf? All right, we're gonna knock it out. Not if she uses a Super Potion. Come on. Another Growl, that's fine. We're sticking to special moves anyway. That'll just boost my special further. I mean, we're in good position, I guess. Loralee's Cloyster. Surf, nearly one shots. Like I said, Cloyster special's pretty poor. It confuses me, of course it does. I hurt myself in confusion, but Cloyster, like Dugong, will not use Clamp. It'll stick to Supersonic as well as Spike Cannon eventually. Won't get an opportunity here. We knock it out with Surf. Also notice that my Cloyster is the right orientation, while the red and blue sprite we got is actually the wrong orientation. Cloyster's supposed to open up vertically, so to speak. I don't know, it always bothered me how that happened, but whatever, it's gone now. We get a terrible critical hit against Slowbro and it goes for Amnesia, hooray. After Amnesia, that does very little. I don't even know what to use at this point. I swapped to try attack and okay, that was clearly a mistake and it goes for Growl. I mean, it's really slow, but we've knocked out three of Loralee's Pokemon with all of 14 HP of damage. Jinx will one shot because it doesn't resist my water moves. Hooray. Now we have Lapras though. Thank goodness we don't level up. Surf's doing pretty decent damage. Unsurprisingly, it goes for Confuse Ray. That or Body Slam I expected. We hit ourselves in Confusion, Body Slam, Parafusion, favorite thing ever. Another Body Slam, we're confused, we can't move because we're paralyzed, Parafusion, the best thing. Body Slam crits, <laughs> of course, and I crit too, this is just perfect. All right, wait, why did I just outspeed there? I'm very, very confused. How did that 
I mean, we won. What happened there? I've never... There's some glitch with the critical... Hit. I don't know what just happened, but something went wrong and my speed was... I don't know. I, I don't know if my speed underflow... I don't know. That was truly strange. And probably when we battle Laurelie another 700 times, we'll figure out why exactly that happened. In the meantime, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. I've never watched that movie. I literally did karaoke and they sang that song and I realized it was that same song that people use on TikTok. I know I sound like I'm 50, but I'm actually not even 30 years old, if you can believe it. I'm just, I'm just a curmudgeon at heart. But you know what keeps me youthful? Beating Bruno time and again. And this battle, I mean, what's to say? I literally one shot every single one of Bruno's Pokemon. I mean, except for Machamp, but it doesn't actually do anything. So, yeah. Wasn't really worried about Bruno at all. I am pretty worried about Agatha. Since I don't have a physical move to hit her Pokemon, they have super high special, knocking out speed. I think you know where this is going. So, let's get ready to queue up the sad music as I lose to Agatha and then have to battle Laurelie 700 more times. All right, Gengar number one. <laughs> okay, off to a great start here. And okay, confused? Why not? At least I woke up. That's kind of nice. And Hypnosis. Oh, that one misses. Don't hit myself in confusion. Doing decent damage. Can't complain. All right, uses Dream Eater. Not asleep. And I hit, and <laughs> take that. I'm so happy. I, I hate when I get freezes because they're so luck-based, but you know what? Feels good, man. Feels good. And you know what I can do now? I can set up all my withdraws. All the withdraws. I will be fast. I will be strong. I will eliminate. I leveled up. <laughs> okay, that kind of serves me right. Golbat is next. I outspeed, one shot, okay, that one genuinely went well. I do outspeed Haunter, ooh, that's great, oh, critical hit. Confuse Ray, that's awful. I hit myself in confusion and all right, there goes the battle. All right, just use, oh, well, swaps out, cool. Actually, truth is Arbok can't do much to me. I wake up and bite, that does nothing. This is great because while I'm still confused, I thought I'd have a few turns to decrease my confusion counter, but critical hit gods were on my side or not? Hard to say. Three down. Guess it didn't matter, not confused anymore. And I think we've done it. As long as it doesn't use Nightshade, we win. It can't knock me out. Toxic is fine. Ice Beam is good. Dream Eater does nothing. We beat Agatha first try. Let's go. Um... Okay, <laughs> did not expect that. Uh, that was a crazy battle. And I really think Lance is gonna be easy. We got a nice Pokemon. All we need to worry about is out speeding and then maybe Gyarados being annoying. Let's see how this goes. I, I think this might go really well. I'm going to set up a withdraw to outspeed. Leer is very good. That's actually two badge boosts and my defense is normal. That's good. Going to set up another withdraw. Hyper Beam gives me a turn to set up. It didn't do all that much. All right, let's set up another withdraw while it's recharging. Hopefully this... Oh, critical hit. My critical hit luck has been all over the place. Some really good luck and some really awful luck. And that's awful luck. Dragon Rage, we only have a nice amount of health left. Down goes Gyarados, but I, I don't know memes aside whether this is enough HP. And now that we've leveled up, we're not very fast. Okay. I don't want to take any chances. I'm just going to go for Ice Beam. I outspeed and knock out Dragonair number one. My outspeed and knock out Dragonair number two. Aerodactyl's going to outspeed me. It goes for Supersonic and misses. We might win. If we outspeed Dragonite, we win. Oh my god. We've made it to the champion on our first attempt. I can't even remember the last Pokemon we did this with. Cloyster, what a weird run. I, 
don't have much to say. Could we possibly first try the Elite? No. What I should really do one of these times is cut the video short so people think it's going to be the victorious battle and then release part two like a day or so later. Like an April Fool's joke in mid-April. One of these days, I will do that. Maybe it's going to be today. Let's see. Now, you may have noticed I used a rare candy, so I won't level up in the middle of this battle and I can set up against Pidgeot. Pidgeot can't really do all that much to me. Case in point, that wing attack did exactly 8 damage. Setting up with draw number 2, it doesn't even bother attacking me. Setting up with draw number 3, it really likes Whirlwind. With draw number 4, well, mirror move, it's gonna have higher defense. Don't know how that helps. With draw number 5, it went for Whirlwind and now I don't care even if it goes for Sky Attack. With draw number 6, wing attack, that's, well, it crits, but I don't care. Guys, I think we did it. One Ice Beam. Two Tri Attack? No crit. Oh my god. Another Ice Beam? Another one at KO. All right, Gyarados is not going to be a one at KO. Leer is fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. I never understood what Surf's animation was supposed to be, but whatever it is, it knocked out our canine. Oh my god, we win. Oh my god, we level up. Oh my god, we level up! Come on! Ah, this is so terrible, because of course... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we win! <laughs> wow. Wow. Alright, well... I don't know what to say. Events certainly occurred that led to this situation. They were sometimes improbable events. And now I have a very hard time ranking this thing because the luck was crazy. I mean, I think it's going forth. How, what else? I don't, I don't even know. 331's a good time. It beat the Elite Four first try. No one really posed too much of a threat. Like, we got some bad luck and good luck against Agatha. We could have gotten another rare candy maybe to avoid leveling. I don't even... I don't know. That's what I'm doing. What a crazy, crazy run, guys. And if you like videos like this, there'll be more of them. Big shoutouts to my new editor, AJ. His channel's in the description that you guys can check out. He has really cool videos and his voice... You guys always say I have a nice voice. Dude has an amazing voice for video. So go watch his videos and uh, I'll be back in a week or so with more of mine. So take care.